Okay, I'd just like to briefly review our uh, policy on board officers, mm -hmm. election or nomination of president, vice president. Uh, any member may place a member's name in nomination. The second is not required. Uh, election for the office will be conducted by a roll call vote once the nominations are closed. Candidate receiving the votes of the majority of all board members will be elected. Uh, in the case of no candidates receiving a majority of the votes cast, the section, second election uh, will be conducted with the two members receiving the highest votes. Um, so what we'll do is we'll take nominations, and we'll close the nominations, and we'll vote on the first candidate. If that candidate receives the majority, we'll stop. If that candidate does not, then we'll move on to the next nomination. At this point, I'd like to uh, open the floor for nominations for presidents.
And he, being that central piece of the puzzle, then found the missing pieces of that puzzle in his executive administration. And they reached out to the staff, to the community, to the parents. And we, as a board, had reached out together. And we are also a part of that puzzle piece. Separately, we are important, but we're not significant. We don't become significant until we all pull together. And that is what we need to do, and we will do, as a team, because we are not divided. We are a nine-member team, a board here in Asbury Park. And we're going to work together with our superintendent and our state monitor because we are building a brighter future for our children, and that's greater than all of us. So I thank you for entrusting me in this position, and I promise to serve, to always to be fair, to always to be inclusive, and no negativity, because that is going to stop us, that is going to stunt our growth. So I thank you for the opportunity to serve. Mr. Saunders. We're together. All of us.
Uh, as that concludes our organization agenda, I'd like to do a roll call for our regular uh, meeting. Sandra Anderson? Here. Ms. Breach? Here. Satiana? Here. Ms. Jones? Ms. Walter Rocker? Here. Ms. Lazinski? Here. Ms. Saunders? Here. Ms. Simmons? Here. Mr. Williams? Here.
and the certificate of appreciation presented to Ms. Corey Wall of the SRA Park Board of Education in recognition of dedicated service to the children of our community, signed by Dr. Mark Recollet, Superintendent.
But one of the largest pieces is the, the student relationship. Um, teachers are constantly working on that. We're all constantly working on that to build better um, relationships with our students. Um, because, of course, we know that that prevents um, many things like behaviors um, and incidents because once students trust you and they know that you care about them, then they come to you rather than they um, so I just really feel like the ICLE process in this district, um, speaking just from my building, has really, really worked. The mentoring that we see um, from Bobby Ashley has been amazing. I've learned a great deal in terms of how to be a better administrator in my building. I think my teachers have seen a lot of um, evidence of that. Um, and we, even though we use data a lot, um, now we're using it, it's more focused, it's more um, relevant, and it's more meaningful and purposeful. Um, so the CIR process and rigor relevance, student engagement, and relationships have, has really become a live document in order so that they can look at each, each other's instruction and make um, improvements and changes in their instruction. So, I mean, it's our superintendent calls it a renaissance going on in our district, but I feel like in terms of the CIR process, um, there's a renaissance going on in the Rock of Island Community School. is the fact that all of the students on the entire grade level um, is, is privy to all the strategies and the structures of uh, measures to be in, and therefore it means that all of them receive the same level of rigor and are exposed to my level of rigor. And I know immediately what I need to do. And also, I can also figure out from what I need in my first block what works and what doesn't work. And by the end of the day, I have actually refocused where I find it to be necessary. I feel like I can master the material better. Last year, from September to January, on the weekend, on the end, it's 
see that there's actually a decrease in the seeds. But the red bar, which is this year from September to January, there's a substantial increase, I believe it's 66% in ELA. And we always say it's what the nature of the are. And what we believe is that it has a lot to do with nature niche and the department. This is a major focus of making discipline relevant in teaching and life lessons. Basically based on good communication skills. Admitting that you've made a mistake, fixing it, and then being able to move on. We've also had an issue that you need to adapt to your environment. Different teachers of different styles, and you begin to adjust your behavior and make a positive change. Adapting, adjusting, and making a positive change. There's a light skill that will help you communicate better with others and therefore be more successful in college and your career. The world is down.
I challenge my students and my staff to a, a dance, park dance challenge. And here's the challenge. Um, are we faster in English? Um, 
let's say I'm up in this room, it's a super nice because I just put things on and go, you know, my friends. Framework and you have that there in your handout. 
Um, you can see various pictures that are a little bit clearer in your presentation um, than up on the screen. Professional learning, we really focused this year on providing job and professional development for the teachers working on instructional strategies and also focusing on rigor and relevance. One of the core components of that is our bi-weekly principles alert, which we combine uh, in there um, not only instructional support, but resources for the teachers to utilize as well as a communication vehicle for myself and the administrators to the teachers and from the supervisors as well. So it's a one streamlined um, communication that I sent out to the teachers and to all the staff within the building. These are a list of our ongoing you know, professional development, HMH, Putin Mifflin. Um, next year we'll be undergoing um, Math 180, which will be another support piece for our mathematics intervention. Um, next generation science standards, LinkedIn is our data warehouse where we'll be utilizing that and analyzing um, evidence statements and making function-based data decisions um, utilizing the data from the LinkedIn, which will also help in driving our instructions forward. So what I want to uh, focus you in on is our premium beginners. We look at those, you know, we started off um, and we have the progress and gains in each of those areas. Um, and we see students demonstrated a plus 12 increase in advancement coding. Um, and so in those developing areas, you want to see a decrease and an increase as you move forward. Again, same thing, uh, but I really want to highlight for you too is the students demonstrated a negative 10 decrease. That means our students are moving out of that level and moving into the other level. So students are leaving out of the low levels and going increasing our student population by 5% in basic comprehension, um, 4% in prof proficient comprehension, and 2% in advanced comprehension. So we're seeing gains through our academic core interventions in um, reading inventories. These are another uh, set of our uh, mentoring programs that we launched this year. Our uh, fleet program is our partnership with the New Jersey State Police. Um, we have Project Ghana, the Omega South Five Fraternity Phi Upsilon so Mentoring Program, uh, which spearheaded our tie day back in November. All, uh, all of our young men got ties and learned how to tie ties um, on that day. Uh, our park, uh, academy, pride, PBSIS, um, and so we have a litany of things there, so I don't want to you know, read it for you because you have it. But one of the other key partnerships is for our young ladies, we have Delta Teams, which we just really relaunched this year um, with the Mama's Count. And so why that's important is because before our young ladies um, were not able to attend those meetings because they were at Neptune. And so I worked with Mr. Buford as well as the Monmouth County Alumni um, chapter to house it at the middle school so that way our young ladies who walk could participate. And so we had, they had um, the meeting last, or two weeks ago, and it's heavily comprised of our young ladies from the middle school and high school participating in. Um, so these are some of our highlight pictures in there. Um, if you want to follow us on Twitter, we very much <coughs> out our, our stuff. Um, PBSIS, I, I want to say publicly, that is um, definitely one of the core strengths of um, my, my administrative team, Ms. Um, Jackson oversees that. She does a bang up job with working and, and, and really galvanizing our students, particularly with PBSIS, PBSIS Junior. Um, Ms. Jackson does a phenomenal job with that. Um, she, you know, she's really creative. Uh, you know Ms. Jackson, she's over the top. She coordinates everything. And trust me, believe me, she, it, 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 it flourishes throughout the school. So a lot of our climate and culture is due to the relaunching of PBSIS. Um, and I really want to publicly recognize Ms. Jackson as well as Ms. Bill Forte for the work that they do in solidifying our climate and culture. Um, if you see our, uh, our suspension report, 
detailed that in our last um, you know, meeting here before the board. Um, our discipline has, has gone down. We've also looked at doing some uh, other creative things with our students. And so this data reflects, and if you know middle school, March is a heavy inning month, right? Um, and so you know, to look at those and um, particularly, so that's, if you look at the numbers, it's not 13. Out of those numbers, the special ed population is included, so we just wanted to break it out so that you can see. Okay? Um, on October 30th, we had a soft opening of our um, Makerspace Student Lounge um, because we were still in its construction phase, but I promised the students that we would open it um, by a given time. And so, although we're still doing some cosmetic things, we had our initial um, launch, and then we had our grand opening um, here where everyone got an opportunity to go in and really partake because we had gotten the environment as we, as we wanted. We're still building on it. Um, however, it is a core area that our students look forward to going into. Um, one of the other pieces that we did this year was our students in the middle school denied recess. So what we ended up doing was going out to the basketball court right off of the, um, the field, and we have recess. Um, and, and we had talked about this with Dr. Greg in, in the summertime with Mr. Jordan. We were a little concerned about how we you know, work with the community, with the community kind of, and the community acquiesced uh, that time between our lunches that the community does not go into the playground I mean, into the basketball court when we're out there, um, and it was it became seen. So now between 10:40 and 1 o'clock, that's our space, right? And so it goes to show that for, for once, the community understands that our students need this outlet. Um, and you know, I want to thank that surrounding community because no one had to go ask permission, um, and the students now feel ownership to go out and, and be out there. Um, we've gone on different Bishop Bucks. We, we're heavy into Bishop Bucks. Um, and so those are a part of the SIS and incentive for our students to go on different trips. You'll see in there ice cream social um, and different movie things that we do as incentives for, for our middle school students. Um, our students, again, is sort of the big top five address to press day, uh, where we had uh, a lot of uh, participation from men in the community, particularly of this outstanding organization. No pun intended. Come and help our young men. And in middle school, a lot of our young men did not know how to tie ties. And so it prepared them. Dr. Rep came, um, the local media, and it was a, a very good turn. Uh, we partnered with Joanna Clark Z for our fitness challenge. Uh, Ms. Del Orbe oversaw that um, aspect uh, of, of that and in a partnership with Ms. Uh, Clark Ziggs. Our Bishop movie, and then one of the things that we've done this year is uh, I'm kind of digging into symbolism. And so, um, just like our Teacher of the Year, staff member of the year, we gave them crowns. Uh, I believe that you know, we need something tangible. I'm an old WWF fan, not WWE. And so I thought, you know, giving our teachers of the month the heavyweight belt, so you'll see that in there. They got the, the heavyweight belt, they got to keep those. The teacher of the week got the intercontinental. They, had, uh, they got the back belt that passed that along. You know, the, the, the next person who won that week, they got certificates. But the other aspect of it was um, just recognizing them, and then those uh, staff members who were um, selected uh, also got a parking space uh, for that week for that month. Um, I'm very, very proud of my custodial engineers. I think I have the best custodial engineers in the district. Um, I'm biased. Um, they have stepped up and made the middle school a place that is clean, conducive to learning. Um, and after having passed two white glove inspections, 
Um, during the summertime, um, they have earned the kudos uh, from myself as well as anyone who walks into that building um, to see the brightness, the, the, the cleanliness, um, and the care that they do take in, in that building. Um, and this is one of the other aspects of we have a monthly staff breakfast uh, coordinated by the staff to kind of commune and fellowship uh, and build a, a, a climate uh, for the staff as well. So moving ahead, um, you've heard briefly about the um, early college program uh, uh, as well as the Dream Scholars. Uh, we had a meeting with the parents um, uh, maybe about a week or so, two ago. Uh, that process has been moving very fast, uh, but very consistent with the timeline outlined by Dr. Revelet, um, as well as with Brookdale Community College. I'm really excited about this program. Um, we've had a meeting today with our uh, schedule really being inventive and creative on how we're going to provide um, services that are rigorous and relevant and consistent with the high goals of building a private future for these students here at Asbury Park. And this was just a couple of snapshots. You'll see pictures of our current eighth graders working on finding their applications because these are just other tools that they need to understand that your resume represents you before you walk in the door. And so these applications are just these students' academic resumes. And we want them to be a reflection of the expectation that we have for them and that we want to pass on to when they get to the high school.
wardrobe malfunction this morning, so we get my casual attire. So now, with the visit and mission statement, what, whatever we do before we begin an activity project or whatever, we always keep the vision and mission in mind. Every activity that we do at the high school, we have to follow a pattern. Before we heard Dr. Adams and Ms. Baumgart acknowledge the rigor relevance framework and the different instructional practices that they've adopted due to the trainings that we've undergone through the coaches and the other formats that we're adopting through this program. Last fall, we discussed and presented data to you. We talked about the graduation rate, 66% because of the individuals who I acknowledged earlier. We talked about the attendance, the discipline. In the winter, we discussed the discipline. This time, as Dr. Barbara led state, we had some creative freedom, if you will, to present to you what we felt was necessary. And I wanted to let you know that Asbury Park High School not only is a school, but it's an institution, it's the hub of the community at times. What we have before you is a picture of students. Do you mind if you just dim the light bulb? Thank you very much. We have before us pictures of students and staff. Because of these individuals with school functions, the administration mission statement is something that we worked on last year. You can see it at the bottom, it says June 2015. We collaboratively worked on this, making sure that it supported what Dr. Burpelet and the central office had created for the district. It, was a, it aligned itself to all the practices that Dr. Burpelet and the committee had communicated with us and to us. And we made sure that as a staff, we honored that and we supported that. Now as administrators, we made sure that we identified the three most important parts, students, staff, and parents or the community. Now throughout my segment of the presentation, you'll see snippets, segments, parts of the mission statements that we had created for the 2015-2016 school year. And I'll not read that to you until we get to the next part. Now with this particular page, you'll see that we have various pictures of what we call Challenge Day. Challenge Day is something that we do for our students so that we can foster a clean and respectful environment. The Challenge Day, the students, they get to be in a safe environment, they communicate with someone who they build a relationship with within about two hours, and the safety of the gymnasium, as you'll see, um, you can see the gentleman there, usually we don't allow them to wear hats, they get by sometimes, but during challenge day, they're allowed to do that because they're going to be comfortable and we expect them to be able to share information with us that may save their lives. We've had students who have confided in us and told us about certain things that have taken place in their lives that no one else would have known until they got to do it and uh, share that with us in that environment. And I purposely put this picture here because as many of you uh, know, I'm very fond of our head custodian, Mr. Xavier Gibbs. A part of our mission state for the district and the school says we have to have a foster a clean and respectful environment. This is a Saturday morning. Mr. Gibbs came in early Saturday morning, and coincidentally I was there early Saturday morning with him. So uh, I took this picture, and he didn't realize that I was taking the picture. I told him I wouldn't tweet that one out next, don't worry about it. So I didn't, but I found use for it today. So again, we are showing you what we do, things that no one else knows about. The National Honor Society, and again, we're still with being fostering a clean and respectful environment, trying to teach our students how to be wholesome students. The National Environment, the National Honor Society students on Saturdays they, and weekdays, they either tutor students at the elementary level or they commit to various community building projects and other projects which would help them and train them on how to be good citizens. Here you have the students who are volunteering and they're working the, the uh, food line there. They have students who are helping with the cleanup on a Saturday morning. And of course, something that goes unnoticed. This is Miss Francis, Miss Ruby Francis. There she's fixing a student's hair. That's something that, it's, it's simple. However, it's one of the things that make us loved by the students because we're not afraid to approach them and help them out. Again, 
These are some of the things that we do that go unnoticed. PBSIS, fostering a clean and respectful environment. What you have there is Dominion. I never get that word right, but I did tonight. Dominion, you'll notice when you enter the building, you'll see the head security officer, and you'll see Dominion next to Inside that Dominion are PBSIS tickets. These students, though they don't appear to be happy, some of them, they just received their PBSIS reward for that week. Here we have students who are cleaning up, assisting with the cleanup process in the cafeteria. They did not get awarded, but they were just there to help out. These types of things we always like to showcase and just publicize so that everyone sees what the students do. This young man is enjoying himself during lunch. He was allowed to dance that day. There's a DJ back there. That's all for PBSIS. These are some of the things that we do that go unnoticed. Myself, I don't like to talk about the things that I do because I feel as though we have so many other things that go on. However, I have to communicate some of the things and share some of the things that we do that go with notes. That's the thing in case you have to notice. <laughs> so, up top, with the assistance of Dr. Christy Howard, we have collaborated with the community, the CAN uh, organization. Up top there you can see Officer Tyron McAllister, class of 1996, so am I. Uh, we have several other uh, gentlemen who have joined us, some uh, reverence pastors and police officers. Now, the meaning behind this is not only to build community relations, but also we have to teach the students about their civic duties and their responsibilities. Welcome home from school safe. That's something that we're going to be doing and talking with the students in the gym on in the June Center programs. We've already started meeting with several students to discuss the way that they approach uh, people of authority. Next month, I'm sorry, June, June 7th, say the date for the community members, we are together. We're hosting a program for the students where the males and females will be addressed by their peers. And the idea is to empower the students and provide them with summertime opportunities, employment opportunities. Um, also support. At the end of our program, we uh, will be working with other organizations in the community, the Eagle from Boys and Girls Club, uh, the police, uh, Asbury Park Police Department. Um, we're creating a site where the students, the young men and the young females, will be able to send information or questions out to these individuals and they'll get a response. So we're not just having a meeting with them to say, hey, listen, walk, uh, use the sidewalk, pay attention to authority. We're also providing them with support systems when they're on their own. So that's, uh, that's going to be a big push for us and uh, look forward to that program. Now, what you see here is me working the, uh, on certain Saturdays, I have a radio uh, show, an educational segment that I share information about education to the Haitian and some of the Latino community members. And uh, that's what we, that's what I do on Saturdays. If you either find me working with the Good News Foundation, here we are planning for the uh, tutoring program that we started, which runs from, we have a tutoring program on Saturdays, and we have the tutoring taking place uh, Monday and Thursday, which Ms. Jackie Hedlund will discuss further. And uh, here we have a new initiative, which is, it started out with well, a Caribbean theme project. However, the high school has adopted a world or global theme, so we're representing everyone in the building. So we're working together here, as you can see me in the background, uh, just smiling and happy to see the people working together and leading the building in a, to, towards a brighter future. Provide all students with a comprehensive and progressive education. The experience that we provide students, it may not be perfect. I like to be honest and candid. And sometimes, someone said, <laughs> that's me putting my foot in my mouth. But, I like for you to get a clear picture of what's happening. We are not perfect. However, we have our moments when we are. Uh, president Alves Anderson, that President Alves Anderson, said that individually we're important, but together we're significant. If you stop and look and see the beautiful parts of Asbury Park High School, where the students get together and they learn, the teachers work with them, and we plan. This is what providing students with a comprehensive and progressive, progressive education looks like. The College of Career, path, uh, career Pathways, they've had various, several trips that they've taken to enhance the students' educational experience. Hands-on activities, a 
uh, provided for the students. The students who went to Harvard, I'm so proud. We have so many students who are doing great things. This year, they went to Harvard twice. Uh, it started in the summertime, and this winter, they just attended again, and they performed well. We had several students placed within the top 20 out of 30 schools who went there last year. These are students who are outperforming some of the greatest, greatest debaters. These are our great debaters. These are the moments that make us smile and remember that we are in a place that's making some great, great uh, productive students and we're producing some great uh, programs and activities for our students. Again, we have the College of Career Readiness Program for our students. We have them attend the Police Academy. Up top, you'll see the students here. There's a simulated interview uh, process that we have for the students. The next the next thing for the district vision and mission is to see the diversity of all the local society. At the high school, we have an individual named Ms. Moni. Ms. Moni Hill is right. She is the library media specialist. She is also the individual who I've charged with the task of starting our makerspace. What she's been doing is researching makerspace uh, information. We've been attending different workshops and training on a Saturday, one Saturday, last month I attended the TEDx training on Makerspace and I shared that information with her. So what we're doing is one, pacing ourselves because I have a and sometimes I throw ideas out to people and my kickstand is some of my staff members. I'll have these great ideas but what I fail to acknowledge is that it does not work overnight. Allow the staff time to work provide them the necessary resources to execute our agenda initiatives. That's actually straight from our mission statement. So I took this morning to give advice and we're working on our major space this year and we're making sure that it's something that's functional. Another project that I handed over to was the BBN project. Being that that's the Mission Broadcast News Network. That's our students, um, which you will see here, who, is, who have worked with AP uh, TV with um, the same point. And this is what we call the boardroom in the mornings at 7.30. I meet with the students in the fall and winter. And now they're making that transition to Ms. McNeil. We'll also support staff collaboration. This year's staff has been given PLC trainings that's focused and surrounds the Regal Relevance Framework. And they also have monthly agendas for the staff. Every week I send out a weekly update every Monday. And I also send out a midweek update to staff just to inform them of the current events and any sudden changes. Again, it's not perfect. There's sometimes we do have last minute activities that change to the schedule. And that is my segment, and this Dr. Kendall will talk about this one. Good evening, I'm here with our as with our high school administration, community members, and teachers. Um, I want to thank you for allowing me to present on the school based youth service program run by DNA. I'm going to be try, try to be very brief um, so I can get lots of questions tonight. Uh, school based youth service program um, in the high schools is the title of the spot is run by DNA. DNA is a century long program of the second largest DNA uh, association in the United States. We are under, the spot is under the Children and Family Health Institute where there's a lot of community programs um, that assist within Asbury Park, such as our, um, including our Community Health Center, um, our WIC program, and also the School Based Youth Service program here in the high school. So, the School Based Youth Service program is a DCF funded program in New Jersey. Hold on. School Based Youth Service program has been around since 1987 in New Jersey. There are over 90 school bases in the state of New Jersey. The School Based Youth Service program at Asbury Park High School has actually been around since the year 2000 and has been run by DNA since 2007. The SPOT stands for Student Potential Optimized for Transitions. And at School Base, we basically have a core team, myself, Mr. Hanson, who is our LCSW, Rodney Solomon, who is our Youth Development Specialist, and Catherine Donahue, who is our APN. Together, we service those students that are registered in our program to assist them on a variety of different We offer a lot of programs and services. Our four pillars are learning support, 
healthy youth development, enrichment, and counseling. Some of the programs we offer are homework lab, uh, lunchtime talk, movie nights, men's and women's groups, game nights, counseling, and our biggest program is our Dream Team Challenge. I'm going to highlight some of them. As far as our counseling services, it ranges from if you're having a bad day with your peer, having some family issues, or maybe you're just not, you have you suffer from maybe some mental health or short term uh, depression. So we could uh, have our LCSW that assist. I can assist as well, or we may refer out to perform care. are 
testing to um, what particular career they're in and aligning them with some background on those careers, also doing some mock interviewing. We also have a local businesswoman and a substitute teacher for Asbury Park High School, Ms. Kate Harris, who runs our group mission employment readiness program, and they've been meeting for 12 weeks now where they actually get interviewed by business owners on the boardwalk and get hired on the spot and selected. Some of our nurturing groups, we worked with Mr. Foskey earlier this year um, with the football team for the football players to participate in our Empowering Young Men group. During the first phase, 18 male students participated, and we just finished our second phase in March, and 10 students participated. We run the Human Trafficking My Life, My Choice once a year for 10 weeks, and we had an average of eight students. Our girls group, which was run by our Rutgers University interns, went for six weeks, and we had an average of five students. And as I mentioned before, we have our weekly knowledge club and lunchtime talk with Tom. Some prevention activities. We do presentations in the, in the cafeteria via our high five station on different types of initiatives. We also have 180 turning lives to come around, um, DNA, resource network, covenant house, or we just talk about other prevention and odd things that are going on that are, excuse me, that are, um, that the students are interested in. For our recreation activities, we hold our spot Olympics, movie nights, game nights, open mic nights, and we also have Rutgers role playing for life that comes in, and they do improv and theater with the kids once a month. These are just some pictures of some of the services the students have done. In the top left, you can see that's actually from the 16th of this month. There was a Better Garden uh, community service, and our students participated in that. At the bottom, we have pictures of our annual spot Thanksgiving, the Choice Bus, which came around last school year in 2015. The bottom right, we have our uh, student from King University that did our paint and punch during um, February for Black History Month. We also have pictures from our empowering young men in the upper left hand, some pictures from Super River Theater of the students that participated in the, in the play. And we also have pictures from our colleague here grabbing my Habitat for Humanity. And in the lower left, we have one of our students helping cut some wood for the house at Union Beach that was adopted by Sandy. We also have some pictures here from our summer program and also our junior achievement initiative where the students at the spot are able to go to Durban Marshall and they do financial literacy and are basically the teacher for the day from grades one through five. We also have a picture from our Shook with Dream Assembly, which basically showed the kids what what their life can be if they don't go down the right, if they don't go down the right path. And that is it from my portion. Thank you so much. Good evening. My name is Kitty Taylor. I'm the active activities coordinator. I'm going to talk about some past activities. September and October is a very exciting month. Um, once at the Asbury Park High School, we have the homecoming activities, low building, all decorated, homecoming home process, and of course the parade. This year our parade was fantastic. We had all the schools involved. Um, it was just outstanding. Everybody started on time. It was just a great community effort. November, Thanksgiving luncheon in the cafeteria with students and staff. We also had our PESIS kickoff. December, we had our holiday luncheon with staff in the media center. Also, we had a holiday luncheon with the students. We played music, decorations, and we also gave out candy canes. I had to find a reason to reach our students. So my effort was to just go to them in the cafeteria for lunchtime. That gave them a sense of ownership, it relaxed them, and it gave us a chance to build relationships. In February, we had our Black History Writing Contest. We also had a Black History Luncheon with students, decoration and music. We played uh, Temptations, The Supremes. So they really got a chance to connect with um, the old time music. In March, we had our Easter lunch with students, decorations, and giveaways. This April, we had a cultural diversity luncheon week. It started the week apart. On Monday, we had Asian food. Tuesday, we had Italian food. Mm -hmm. Wednesday, we had soul food. 
Thursday we had Hispanic food, and Friday Allen food, and it was good. <laughs> our future activities consist of our Caribbean World Month. Activities are scheduled for the entire month of May. It's work in progress. Our principal has put together a very diverse group of uh, teachers, and we are working on it. May 5th is single the the Mayo celebration in the cafeteria during lunch. And also we have Patient Flag Day, which is also incorporated in the Caribbean World Month celebration. We have our red carpet event for the junior senior prom that's on May 19th in front of the high school starts at 5 o'clock. It was outstanding last year, and this year we expect it to be even better. Uh, I'm really excited about our annual Cal Club football competition. <laughs> we have two teachers, Ms. Dunst and Ms. Crossman here, and they be trained the seniors and junior girls to play flag football. And the young men are the cheerleaders. <laughs> so, you all are invited to come out to this grand occasion. The band is invited, and Ms. Hedlund is now involved with the squad, and we just want everybody to
to the programs we're getting in these kids. It's about hope and it's about opportunity. So my challenge to the board always is to please have our moral compass facing towards your students. It's going to be time that we're going to have to do our job and we're going to have to disagree at things. But if we keep the moral compass towards our students, and remember, you are hard hand reach. You're here to build a brighter future. And we can prosper. We can truly take this district to another level. So I thank my principals. I thank the board for the support we're doing that work. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
Ms. Martin, who I grew up around with the Romeo uh, family member in college. I see the fruition, I see the group. Uh, everybody that's sitting up here, Dr. Epaulet, man, that hard hat nation, man, is for, for me is a personal, uh, a personal grasp of what you're trying to do because I understand it and I definitely appreciate it. Ms. Angela, congratulations. Appreciate you sitting there. And again, these presentations tonight were so much more enlightening than every other uh, qualitative presentations that we've been given. Because this is what kids uh, attract to effort. So with that, thank you. Welcome, new and returning women. Let's make this year great. that there is no other members at this time we will close the public participation also at this moment as suggested and rightly so that we uh, be quiet for a moment of silence please in memory of mr joseph rings board member
for their service. I'm sorry that uh, Nicole had to leave, but I wanted to make a special uh, I was the state monitor. Um, I had worked with Nicole. I believe that she did an outstanding job this past year of, of uh, introducing perhaps the some of the ways that uh, we can bridge some of the uh, separation that has occurred over the years in, in, uh, in the on the board. Uh, she and I worked together to present and, uh, uh, a report that we were going to work on and eventually uh, distribute to the board in this final form of an action plan where we could address many of the were grades that were, were actually recorded in CUSAC. Uh, I'm sure, Mrs. Anderson, that you and I can pick up where Nicole was left off. Uh, she uh, spent a lot of time on it, and um, she has some very, very good ideas, and I'd like to thank her because I think we made a lot of progress. Uh, I've seen a lot of progress made uh, in the district, particularly over the past year, uh, and I think that um, it's a wonderful thing for the children of Asbury Park because they are the ones that should be benefiting from whatever we do at this table. And I think that um, what I would like to basically say is I think that Asbury is making huge strides up and I hope that this board will be able to put its differences and address the needs of the kids and forget about individual personalities and individual <laughs> To summarize it, it's time to let the past be the past and move forward. And I believe that uh, uh, we've made some great strides this past year to do that. And we just hope that we, we can uh, take that report forward and go from there. Just to piggyback on what she said, um, I don't remember or recall the last time we had a board uh, reorganization meeting where we had no opponent, no opponents, the president and the vice president. I think that's a testament to where we're going yeah. ahead as far as we all got along. Nobody opposed and I think that's Shows you where we will go right
looking at your agenda, I am asking you to get me a motion to make this a consent agenda from B1, 1, to B, I'm sorry, to B10, 30. Thank you. 